Over to you. Smart. So smart. So smart. Okay, go. Also quite annoying. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Do you want to let everybody know what we just got one other person jumping in? Sure. You want to let everybody know what we're up to today? For a tomato sauce, we will be having 250 grams of baby cherry tomatoes. Yes, why are we using very big baby cherry tomatoes? Because we can't have meatballs without some tomato sauce, can we? Fortunately, we couldn't do. What's it called? The other thing, not tomato sauce. I have no idea what you're on about. Hello! Green one. The green one, pesto? Pesto! You can do pesto? Why? Because I don't like pesto. Oh, because she doesn't like pesto. She's actually, contrarily, not an enormous fan of basil. So, although there's basil in the recipe, you can choose to have it in or out. There's no, no right or wrong in this kitchen. I'm hoping not in yours either. But so, what we're going to make today is... Tomato sauce. And... Cheesy meatballs. Melty middle meatballs. They won last week. They did. They won. Well, actually, made, well, they won and also... A very special cousin birthday girl. Ah, oh, yeah. Chose it as a special birthday present. So, so we're going to tell her that that's why we're doing it. But actually, it's because everybody voted and they won. <laughs> 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 okay, so the first thing that we're going to do. Hopefully, everybody's got everything together, gathered all their ingredients. Do you want to tell them what ingredients we're going to be using first? We're going to be making the tomato sauce, aren't we? Tomato sauce. We will have 200 grams of baby cherry tomatoes, 50 grams of butter, one tablespoon of olive oil, a handful of fresh basil leaves. Now, in case anybody thought, that Dorothy was really, really clever and can remember her own recipe. Um, don't, because she's not. Um, it's all written down in front of her so she doesn't forget. <laughs> but one of the things that I'm going to do is send you a little message in the chat, which is down at the bottom um, of your screen. If you click chat, you'll be able to send a message or send a question to us, which I can get to at the end. But if you want to jump in and ask a question as we go, please do unmute yourself and shout out and, and we'll try and answer. I've got a question. What, what, what's your question? Can you cut the mozzarella? Can you cut the mozzarella? Not yet. I think let's get the tomatoes on, shall we? So, in your chat, first off, is your list of... Um, is your list of ingredients, which are up at the top. Someone's already written, my mom said 250 grams of butter. Um, it's not, darling, it's only, 50, it's only 50 grams of butter. That would be the same amount of butter as tomatoes. So um, that would be weird. Do you want to just show them how much? So we, because we're feeding very hungry, big, hairy, scary, fat yes. boys, we've done 500 grams, so we've doubled up all of our tomato and our butter. So we've got 500 grams of tomatoes and 100 grams of butter. And we're going to add in a little slug of olive oil as well. Slug. Slug, chef technical term. Basically means a bit more than a tablespoon. Oh, so confusing. You're not going to measure that out, are you? You're just going to go. But they're still measuring things. They're still measuring. I think you've done yours already. They're measuring. Are you, are you measuring your <laughs> She can't hear you. Yes, she can. Oh, we've got somebody else. We've got other people that are trying to jump in. Done. Done. They've got oil. I think they have to get it. Can everybody just give me a quick thumbs up whether they can hear us okay? Or a thumbs down if they can't. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Yeah, we have a couple of people who said they've got um, some operator errors happening. So hopefully that's not at our end. But do you just send us a little message and let me know if there's any issues. But for those of us who've just jumped in, a quick recap. What do we do? Tomato sauce. Tomato sauce. And? and cheesy meatballs. Cheesy meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what we, all we've done so far is... is go on, tell them. Uh, 
the tomatoes and the butter into a into a into a beautiful pot. If you've got an ugly pot, that's fine too. Um, we happen to have a beautiful pot, and what we also have is um, a pot that has a really tight, good fitting lid, which is super important because then um, the steam gets built up and it makes the tomatoes burst and melt and fall apart, which is what we want them to do. So we're gonna put the lid straight on, no seasoning, don't need anything if you've got cherry tomatoes, and we're gonna get it on the heat behind. It can go on a low to medium heat. No, there's nothing wrong under there. You want to try? No? Terrified. Fire, a little fire starter here. All right. Is it just a... Is it just a... You don't need to use one of these, but unfortunately our burner has gone off. Decided to give up. It's got corona, obviously. Um, okay, so... Not super hot, but sort of just above a low, a low gas flame. If you're working on induction, I'd put it on maybe a five if you've got an induction hole. Otherwise, medium low gas and with the lid on, and then we're just going to forget about it. If you've got 250 grams of tomatoes and 50 grams of butter and your tablespoon of olive oil, that'll take about six or seven minutes. Um, and at that point, we'll take the lid off and have a good look at them, give them a bit of a smush and a stir. But if you've got more than that, it could take nearly double that, just so, so you're aware. Now, oh, can you hear that pop? That's smart. Right? Amazing. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is get going with our um, sausages. No one's going to believe this, but I'm actually going to holler upstairs and tell my husband to stop hoovering. There are words that I never ever thought would come out of my mouth. <laughs> will you show them how to split your sausages, dog? So, you will get your sharpest knife and you will cut the skins off your sausages. So, that's the first one. Ugh. Was that flicking around? <laughs> Do you want me to bring the plastic over? Please, please. Yeah? You can pop that there. So she's very carefully slicing with a nice sharp knife down the centre of the sausage, not cutting the sausage in half, although if you did it wouldn't be the end of the world. Because we're going to do that anyway. Pretty much going to do that anyway. And she's just removing the skin from the outside of the sausage. Now I did have a couple of messages. I, by the way, in case you wondered what I was doing there, I can hear my tomatoes bubbling and popping just a little bit too fiercely. So I've just turned it down a little bit. So you don't want to hear them being sort of ferocious, but just gently bubbling is what you're after. I think also, because we didn't have the butter on the bottom of the pan, the tomatoes were coming completely in contact with the heat of the, the bottom of the pan and so they'll have, they'll have been popping very, very quickly. And the one thing you don't want really is for them to catch and burn. No, that would be terrible because then you will have a lumpy, burny, rich. No one likes a lumpy, burny, rich what? Tomatoes. Where are you going with that? Okay, tomato sauce. Now this, by the way, a little bit of product placement. Although, <laughs> although I think that fresh tomato sauce is the absolute best in the world. And if you make a big batch, if you double the recipe, I mean, it couldn't be more simple, there's only three ingredients. Um, I think it's phenomenal. And you can, you can double it up and make a big old batch and then put it, pop it in the freezer. Or if you're really clever, you can can it and put it in jars and put it under boiling water. Um, and then it keeps for months and months and months. But even popping it in the freezer means you've always got fresh tomato sauce um, ready to go. But Dorothy is quite a big fan of this. And so <laughs> when we knew that lockdown was happening, I had to run out and literally, I couldn't care less about Lou Roll. I panic purchased multiple tins of Mutti Polpa tomato sauce because I actually knew that my life would not be worth living. 
if this one did not have pulpa to go on after. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't eat any others. You wouldn't. You do because think that is the best ever, don't you? Because most of the other tomato sauces are really spicy. Okay. And they're always coming in like warm or jars or... In what jars? Jars. In jars. Okay. You've well, got like an aversion to jars? Okay. <laughs> but anyway, we've now got so many of our tins that I also wanted to show you our little trick. I'm sure loads of you have already thought about this, but instead of one of the wonderful things about lockdown that I found is it makes us really think hard about the things that we're throwing away. Um, and what we might be able to make use of in another way. So this is one of about 20 that we've currently got going with seedlings in. Um, it's a really nice way to reuse your cans that otherwise you might just put in the recycling. Um, anyway, hope everyone's getting on okay with their sausages. Are you finding it um, easy enough? Oh, someone's holding something up there. What have we got there? What is that? Oh, lovely. Lovely. Someone else has got another brand bit of product placement. <laughs> Gorgeous. I tell them stuff and you wash your hands. You left me hanging. I thought this isn't my show. <laughs> also, there's no point in washing your hands at this point because you're going to get them really, really itchy mucky. Now, I've got to say, I'm actually really proud of Dorothy because earlier she was kind of going, oh, it's really disgusting and sticky and horrible. Um, and she kind of has a point. So, Dot, we have a question for you. Oh, yeah, give us. Yes. Will they taste different if we're using tomatoes versus tomatoes? They will taste completely different. Um, they will be much, much better. Much cheekier, maybe, maybe a little bit fresh. <laughs> I also had a brilliant question um, from somebody saying, links? What do you mean sausage links? I'm like, oh dear God, you might be the only person in the whole world who doesn't know the difference between a link sausage and a patty. Um, it's not just the Americans, <laughs> pretty much everyone talks about link sausages and patties, but here in the UK we just say sausages and everyone knows that a sausage is a sausage. Like, call a sausage a sausage. Oh, I don't know why I'm finding that really funny right now. That's really puerile. <laughs> but yes, sausage links, very important. Mainly because the reason I chose sausage links rather than sausage patty or sausage meat is because it makes it really easy for the kids to um, divvy up the right amounts, was, was my thought. So right now, I'm cutting the sausages in half after I have taken the skins off. The skins off. Right, and so also guys, I appreciate that some of you have got in touch and said, mm, that's not gonna be enough for a family. And so I have said, just double up everything if you're doing it for four people. So this is plenty for a, you know, a hearty meal for, um, for two. Because but if you've got some wine. Shh, I want to tell them that, they got messed up. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you answered me. I'm supposedly trying to do backup Blue Peter style extra versions, but, um, We'll see. Mm, I was about to check them surreptitiously, but you blew my cover. Um, anyway, so so some of you will have maybe 12 sausages in front of you to work through. That's fine. Um, you can just keep going as we go. Um, no big drama, but I didn't think you'd want to watch Dorothy make 12 meatballs. That would make for some really boring TV. Um, right, I'm just keeping an eye on my tomatoes. I can turn them up the tiniest bit now. Give them a little stir. What to do? Just take it off mute and take I it I know over. what to do. Raise hands. So have you got a question, sweetheart? Someone got a question? Yeah. Go on. You just pull around. Are you meant to uh, cut and make the sausages into the meatballs now? That's what we're going to do next, yes. So, so if you... What you'll do sure. is um, just make a uh, cut and... Once you've cut all your sausages in half. And taken the skins off. Yeah. Um, you will, um, like. Can I just ask, should we have cut up our mozzarella? Ah, uh, yes. We, we'll do that together in a moment. Ah. No, no need to, to worry about that. The only thing that would be good now, um, so first off, you want to take the skins off the sausages, as Dot's been doing. And then the next thing you're going to do is cut those sausages in half. 
so they're ready to fill with the mozzarella. And the only thing, if you haven't done it already, is to drain your mozzarella um, and pat it nice and dry, because if it's really watery, it's just going to um, leak out. Um, so I did specify, ideally, sort of firm, fresh mozzarella, but actually, there's even somebody on here who can't stand mozzarella, makes their skin crawl, and so they're going to use cheddar, which also works just fine, and actually often has less chance, because it's got much less moisture cheddar, or any gooey cheese, even halloumi would be great, um, some asiago would be fantastic, with an Italian sausage, um, the, options are, are endless so don't feel like it's got to be mozzarella just any cheese that's melted and so what i'm doing is mass like molding the sausages that have been peeled and cut in half i will mold them into like sort of disc shapes not too thin and then i will put a piece of mozzarella that's about the size of a dice so if you've got really big fat sausages like not every sausage is built the same um if you've got big fat sausages you could probably manage to shove in a bit of a bigger piece of mozzarella or cheese but our sausages are standard absolutely bog standard sort of school dinner sausages um that we got from somewhere that I might work for. Um, and they're lovely, they're really simple, they're really plain, they haven't got any herbs or spices particularly, but they are seasoned, which again is another thing that, um, reason why I chose sausage links is because they are all pre-seasoned. So you don't need to add anything to them if you don't want to. Um, and so once you've done your first thing, um, you will put your piece of mozzarella in and then you will put your second sausage disc on top of that and then you will smooth so you see a crack oh, sorry we missed how big we're cutting the mozzarella could you say that bit again please sure so you will have your disc your sausage disc flat on your board mm -hmm. and then you'll put a piece of mozzarella onto it and that piece of mozzarella is about that size. So it's about the size of a dice for, you know, a standard dice if you've got a standard sized banger. Um, but sometimes, like the Italian sausages that we get from our lovely deli around the corner are almost twice that size. So as long as you feel that you can squash sausage meat all the way around that piece of mozzarella in an even way, ideally about the thickness of your finger all the way around, then you're onto a winner. But what she's just said is key to this, okay? So the way to make sure that you keep as much cheese inside rather than spilling out. You will smooth them. So there would be like a I show because you've done a really nice job of this. So when you seal the edges of, of the, the meatball, the two bits of, of meat together, you'll see that there's a little bit of a crack showing. And if you take your thumb and sort of smoosh over all the cracks and over all of the seams until you can't tell where any of them are, that's going to give you the best chance of keeping your cheese inside. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret though. Almost the best bit of this is when the cheese doesn't stay inside because then it spills out and goes all crispy and crunchy and caramelized on the tin. And you can choose whether to put your meatballs on a tin that's got parchment paper or not. Um, parchment paper sometimes makes it easier to lift the cheese off if it's spilled out. Um, but if it's direct on the tin, it gets even more caramelised um, and golden. Sorry, were we meant to have used the egg yolk already? So, the egg yolk, I'm going to share the recipe at the end. So the egg yolk is completely unnecessary unless you've decided to use something like mincemeat. And I know that there was one person 
who was thinking about doing that and I sent them a little message saying so if you don't have sausage meat and you feel confident enough with the ratios to, to make this without using already portioned out sausages then you can use an egg yolk to help to bind that mincemeat together um, it's completely unnecessary unless you've got quite a dry mince that you're working with so I've just added that on um, and um, in case anybody has an issue with that and that will be um, full directions about that are in the recipe which I'll, I'll give to you at the end of class wait so, I, we've been a little bit tardy are we meant to have um, preheated the oven or no you don't have to so if you want to cook these immediately then yes preheat the oven if you okay. don't you want to have these for dinner later then obviously don't preheat the oven because you're not going to cook them now but if um if you're doing it now for kind of early supper if you're, if you're in the uk for a sort of kids supper in the uk then you can cook them now and they are best eaten as soon as they come out of the oven really um and if that is what you're going to do if you've got a parent around um or a grown-up that you trust to make some pasta wow. um I'm, I'm evil, I know. Um, then uh, they could go ahead and get some pasta on. And it, Papadelli works really nicely with this. Um, we've actually got some amazing trophie, which are like little spirals that have been handmade by um, our Italian neighbour who gave them to us yesterday. So we're going to have ours with trophie. And although we'll cook them with you now, um, you won't get to see the end result because everyone's going to be cooking them at different times. Does that make sense? So Doc's busy cutting up more bits of mozzarella here. I don't think you need to cut, cut any more dice. You only need six, don't you? Yeah, you can pop that in your mouth. Go on. So I'm just going to show you again how kind of smooth that is. Do you see how it's quite difficult to see any seams or Oh, look, if I do that, I can actually block so it off. So do you make them into balls now? Yes, sweetheart, you can make them into balls now. And then if you don't want to cook them right now, you can just put them on the oven tray, ready to go in later. All right? Look, that's yeah. one, isn't it? And they're about the size of, well, are they about the size of golf balls? Do we, do we cook the pasta right now? If you want to eat these straight away, you could ask mummy or daddy to put some pasta on um, and your meatballs are going to take about 25 minutes to cook um, and if you want to have them with pasta, then yes, you can go ahead and, and get somebody to pop that on for you. And Laura, what temperature? So if it's 200, it's about 450. Old school temp. Thank you. Wait, um, do you make, so, do they all have to be with mozzarella? No. You can have some mozzarella meatballs. If you want to make normal meatballs, you can do it the same way or a different way. They won't be as big. And because I'm making some mozzarella and some not mozzarella. And some not mozzarella. So I know, Diane, you're not a big mozzarella fan, are you? And that's totally fine. So you can have any kind of melty cheese. Just making mozzarella for mum and dad. Sorry, lovely. I'm just making mozzarella for my mum and dad. But I have a non-mozzarella. I'm loving it. Well, 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 that's very, very nice. I'm sure they'll be thrilled. And then what have you decided to put in yours? Nothing? Or are you going to put some cheddar or something in? Nothing. Fair enough. A purist. I like a purist. Go you. So go and check, everybody, your tomato sauce, because it's probably going to be bubbling away now. And if it's anything like mine, anyway. Mine's now really bubbling away nicely and all of my tomatoes have popped and the juice from the tomatoes has come up. Not all of them. Not all of them, you don't reckon? Well, actually, they've all popped. They've all popped. Not Miss Contrary. 
<laughs> they've all, they've pretty much all popped. And so I'm now going to take the lid off so that the juice evaporates a little bit and the flavors get more concentrated. Now, in the recipe, which I will put up any moment, yeah. um, I've also said, yes, of course you can use tomatoes that aren't cherry tomatoes. The only thing I would say is that cherry tomatoes pack an amazing punch of flavor. They're really umami. They've got lots of sweetness, lots of saltiness, lots of tan, and particularly at this time of the year. Um, these ones are actually from Isle of Wight tomatoes, but um, they've given me some amazing tomatoes. Do we? Yes, darling? Do we season our sauce now? Do you season your what, lovely? Our your sauce. If you need to. So what I was going to say is if you're using cherry tomatoes, you might find that you don't need to add anything at all. Now I added, um, just because it's all I've got at the moment, I added salty butter, so I know I don't need to put any more salt in there. And if you've not used cherry tomatoes, but use normal tomatoes, um, they, mu they might need just a pinch of sugar and a pinch of salt, um, just to, to bring the flavor out. And you might want to cook it down a little bit more to, to make the flavors um, really develop and get much stronger than if they were a little bit watery. So if you're using big tomatoes, you might find that the flavor isn't quite there yet. But I know with my cherry tomatoes, they're going to be. Laura? Yes, lovely. I, my uh, sauce doesn't look like tomato sauce. Your sauce doesn't look like tomato sauce? I think it's, it's just tomatoes. So, and it's on a middle class. That's because you're not finished yet. Don't panic, okay? So I'm going to show you what mine looks like, and I'm betting that yours looks pretty much the same. Like that. Oh wait, I'm gonna see. Can you see? So my tomato sauce is still definitely lots of tomatoes swimming in lots of juice. Can you see all that gorgeous juice? Yeah, that's the same as mine. Yeah, brilliant. So you know you're on the right track. So this is just the beginning, lovely. And then what we're gonna do is take a fork. So you've got options. If you like a rustic tomato sauce, which I do, um, I'm just going to take a fork and very gently smush them down so that they open up and release all of their flavours. And I'm going to take the lid off and let them cook down just a little bit more to thicken up. However, if you like your sauce like Dorothy does, which is really smooth, you can ask a grown-up to help you with an immersion blender or a stick blender um, to, to whiz them up really oh. sharp. Yeah. See how we blend the sauce, please? Yeah. Laura? Yeah? Oh, you know what I have a tomato sauce? Can we put pepper in it? Like, salt and pepper? Can't hear you, lovely. Can you get a bit closer to the computer? Can we put pepper in it? So you don't have to put anything in it at all if you don't want to. If you want to put pepper in it, go ahead and put a load of pepper in it. Absolutely fine. One of the other things that you can do with this sauce is use it as a base for all kinds of things. You could add capers, you could add black olives, you could turn this into a puttanesca, maybe add some anchovies and chili. The world is your oyster. This is your sauce. You make it the way you want to make it. There is no right or wrong. If you don't want to add any sugar, don't add sugar. If you want to add a bit of salt, go ahead and add some salt. It's, if it tastes the way you want it to taste, then you don't need to add anything else. If it doesn't, Put in what you think it needs. Sound good? All right. Dot now has managed to make her six meatballs. And about to wash my hands super well because... Yeah, she's washing her hands super well to get all the stickiness off because she's going to do the next step for her meatballs, which again is a bit of a secret tip. And I hope that nobody noticed me taking ours out earlier so we can show you in a minute. They look great. How are you doing over there? 
Yeah, so she's just getting all the really sticky bits off her hands, which will be there because you're playing about with pork mince. And the next thing you're going to do is oil your hands. So with clean hands, make sure that you've got your tin ready and you can decide. There's again, no right or, or wrong way, but have your tin with parchment paper if you want to make sure that it's easy for you to slide them off and you don't want to do too much washing up. Parchment paper is like my uh, sort of secret weapon in the kitchen. I use parchment paper on almost everything um, that I roast or bake because it means there's not so much washing up and you can just put the paper in the thing um, and give it a quick rinse off and nine times out of 10 you're good to go. But, yes, hang on, but if you want them to be really sticky um, and get that lovely caramelized vibe, then you might be better off doing it straight onto a tin. So you decide. So you'll get your oil. Once, once you've made all your meatballs and you're sure there's no seams yeah. left. Could you please pour it on? Yeah, sure I can. You're just gonna pour a teeny really really bit of olive oil. Yeah. And then okay. Now where do you pour the olive oil? He's just poured a little bit into her hand and then rubbed her hands and dripped any excess onto the balls so that they're going to all get coated in a light film of oil. You don't have to use yes. vegetable oil, any oil you like really, other than maybe peanut oil could be a bit weird. Rub your hands together. And then once we've done that, they can go straight onto the tin. Pick them all up one by one. Pick, pick them up so they've got a little bit of oil on. All right. Yes, yeah. so because they're all going to have a little bit of oil. Roll, roll, roll them around. Am I on mute? Yes. Yes, no. okay. Not. How do I put myself on mute? <laughs> all right, I'll do it for you, lovely. <laughs> I love all the kitchen shout. <laughs> we had one class recently where somebody said a naughty word. Because <laughs> they thought they were on mute. The joys of live. Hmm? How are you getting on? Yeah, so they're not super oily now. You don't want them really oily. You just want them to have a nice slick of uh, film of oil. And all that is going to do is help it to stop from sticking and evenly cook all the way around um, your meatball. So lots of times when you cook a sausage, you often don't need any oil. Um, particularly sausage patties like this, the meat has quite a lot of fat in it already, which will melt away as it cooks. Um, but we find that this helps them not to stick and to go nice and golden all the way over. And my tomato sauce, should I show you what my tomato sauce looks like now? Can you see? So it's still really liquid with all those melted tomatoes. And that's gonna take still quite a, quite a while to cook down. And every now and then I'm just gonna make sure that it's not sticking to the bottom. Yay. Okay, um, so, so, with, so with our tomato sauce, yeah. we've just liquidized it. I'm not sure what's happened, but it tastes like very creamy tomato soup. Uh, what could I add to it to rescue it back slightly, do you think? Thyme is the only thing you add to it. So, as in, on, the, on, on your watch. So, if you're gonna cook down, I was just about to say, so this tomato sauce is not going to be like tomato sauce that's bright red that you get out of a can. It's gonna be an orangey yellow color because it's actually got fresh tomatoes in it and there's no coloring um, and it's also much uh, it's much, it's, you're using fresh tomatoes, but it's not condensed really so much. Um, but I promise you, it will taste amazing. And so but hang on, do I just keep cooking it with the lid on then? No, take the lid off, because you want now, see how my, mine's got the lid off now. Sorry, I, I, I thought I mentioned that earlier, I might not have. So once, you've, once all your tomatoes are popped and melted and opened up, you can give them a squash so that you can see how much liquid you've got in there. And then you're just going to let it simmer away until it's the consistency that you want it to be. 
Oh, okay. Sorry, Sam told me to liquidise it, so I've liquidised it. I've got tomato soup. No, no, that's completely right. So you've got two different options. You could either do a rustic version or yeah. a smooth version. And there's no right or wrong time, really, to, to blitz that. It's fine. Um, the only thing you need to watch, if you do blitz it and you want to reduce it down and down to thicken it up, it will spit if you let it catch on the, on the bottom too much and you have it too hot. So just be aware of that. But every now and then, give it a little stir and, and keep it bubbling away until it's the thickness that you want it to be. And that, if you're using 250 grams of tomatoes, that could take 15 minutes. Um, if you've got 500 grams, that might even take up to 30. But so I've got mine bubbling away and it will change quite quickly, so keep an eye on it. Okay. Mine, okay. mine's still, you know, got a fair amount of liquid going on. Okay. I, Thank you. It'll, it'll come to the right consistency. Right, oh. Oh, she's getting the lights on. Something all very dark in here. Right. Are these ready for the oven? Yeah? Yes. Now, don't panic if, if some of you haven't made all of your meatballs because you're making 320 for your family. Don't panic. You just keep going and put them all in together when you're ready to, okay? And you can do that after class. Um, but we are going to pop ours in now because we're going to have an early supper um, because we've got movie night tonight. Okay? And we're going to choose to put ours straight onto the tin. And what you want to do is make sure that they're quite well spaced so they've got lots of room for the heat to move around them and make them evenly coloured. All right. Should we get those in? And now my oven has um, heated up to 200 degrees, it's piping hot, and so it's going to shock heat the outside. Um, it's called the Maillard process, very boring, don't worry, I'm not going to annoy you with that. But you're going to get this lovely brown caramelised outside crust, which will allow the middle to be cooked enough after about 20-25 minutes that your mozzarella is melted, but it's cooked all the way through and you've got a lovely golden brown outside. Just keep an eye on it because everybody's oven is different. We're going to pop those in now. Ready? Ooh, hot, hot, hot. Straight in, top shelf. Laura, sorry, what temperature do I need? 200 degrees. Okay, thank you. Sorry, did you say um, set the timer for 20 minutes? So set your timer for 20 minutes and then set it again for 10 minutes because one of the things that you might want to do is if your oven cooks a little bit hotter on one side than the other, most ovens cook hotter at the back or hottest at the front if it's convection. Um, and you might want to um, give them a little scoosh and turn them so that they're all evenly coloured. And then are you ready? Are you ready for the big reveal? Oh, have you got a question? <laughs> what was your question? Should we set a timer? Oh my gosh, she's absolutely right. I'm busy chatting away. Yes, set the timer. Set the timer. <laughs> Go and tell Alexa. What else is she good for? Okay. How much minutes do you put the meatballs on for? We're going to put our oven, it takes about 20 minutes, but we're going to check them after 10. So if you set your alarm for 10 minutes, check them, and then cook them for another 10 minutes, they should be done. Okay. More than six, though, it might take a little bit longer because the meat will go into the oven and will drop the temperature of the oven. It'll take a little bit longer for the temperature to come back up again. Does that make sense? Yeah, thanks. Of course. Right, Doc, are you ready for the big reveal? Come in. So, all of you lot are going to be doing this at different times, which is totally fine. And you might be having pasta with it, you might not. And we'd love to see your pictures of how it turns out. Let us know. Um, we have oh. such amazing pictures of everybody's um, things that they made last week. And chocolate cakes in all different shapes and sizes, um, which is very cool. Um, when do we put the basil in? When do we put the basil in? You can put the basil in right at the end. So if you like your tomato sauce really basil-y, you can add it and blitz it up. Or you can have it as a garnish. Dot doesn't really like that, so I end up always having to have it as a garnish. Big reveal. Big reveal. Everybody ready for the big reveal? Da 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 da. <laughs> All caramelised and cheesy. <laughs> really? So excited for mine to be cooked now, Dot. 
<laughs> and the joy of these is that 20, 25 minutes, I'm going to pop them up here, darling, in fact, let me move this that way. The joy of these is that your 20, 25 minutes that your meatballs take to cook is roughly the same amount of time as it's going to take you to bring a big old pot of water up to boil um, and dump some pasta in it. And there's no right or wrong with the pasta. We, sometimes we do this with rice, by the way, as well. Or if you're trying to go without carbs, it's really nice to use um, a really hearty uh, Greek salad or green beans. Um, and often... Do you usually use beef mince? Is this unusual to use sausages? Classic meatballs, really classic meatballs, and by the way, there is huge controversy about who invented the meatball. But classic meatballs are usually about 50-50 pork and beef. Um, but we've just done pork ones. But there is no reason, in fact, why you can't do these with chicken. Um, uh, we often have um, friends over who don't like to eat pork, and so we make them with chicken sausages. Um, the world's your oyster, really. These also, by the way, make really good burgers. So if you want to double the size and grab yourself some beef mints. And make them into flatter, not flatter, round. fatter, bigger, and cheese in the inside, that's really good. But again, if you're going to use beef mints alone, or half beef, half pork, I highly recommend mixing in one egg yolk into your mix just to help it to hold all together. Um, that's about it really, isn't it? So we'll post a picture. We have no what If you weren't vegetarian, I would offer you one of these meatballs, but unfortunately you aren't. Aww. So I'm going to offer myself. <laughs> yeah, offer yourself one. Very good. Well, I think it's important, right? Chef prerogative, you've got to try it. Hi, Laura. Um, what do we do with the egg yolk? So if you're making it with beef mince, which is a little bit looser than when it's in a sausage, you can add one egg yolk to your um, sort of 400 grams of beef mince, and it just helps to bind it and hold it all together. And so if you were going to make melty middle burgers or beef mince meat mm -hmm. only, that were quite lean, mm -hmm. um, Oh, <laughs> you want to show them? Um, and these are cooled down a little bit even, but they're still melty. Um, you can use one egg yolk and just mix it really mm. well through the beef mince before you form your <laughs> Thank you. Please don't look very cheesy anymore because I accidentally cracked it open. <laughs> um, so I had to like shove it on. But there it is, the cheesy, cheesy. Cheesy, cheesy meal. But don't worry if some of them, so a couple of ours have, have popped slightly and it just means then they get, look at that one. Look, it's burst open just a little bit and then you've got all that lovely, gorgeous caramelized cheese on the top. Yum. So these are also really great. Um, Snacks just with tomato sauce, you don't have to have the pasta, you can do it any way you like. Well, I think that's just about it, guys. It's been so lovely having you. That was a super simple one. Next week, we're going to do something really simple, but something I bet none of you've done. We're going to make butter and we're going to make cheese in one class butter and cheese. You're going to walk away with your very own ricotta and butter that you can then make something called a compound butter, which you can add anything you like to. Chili, herbs, lemon zest, garlic, and I'm gonna show you how to roll it up and keep it in the fridge. And then you've got garlic butter to put on bread, add into pastas, make sauces with. Um, it's a really great way to use up odds and ends of herbs that maybe you needed for another recipe, but you didn't use at all. Um, so yeah, that's, that's gonna be fun. And I'll, I'll send out all the ingredients list um, in a day or so, so that everybody can get their ingredients ready for next week. Does that sound like fun? Yay, lots of thumbs up. And by the way, hmm. this was definitely not my idea. It was almost 100% my brother's. Oh, little shout out to the big brother there. Who, it's true, he did sort of invent these. I'm sure somebody else thought of it first, but yeah, he is a bit famous in our house. It was tasty. Reason. It was from Tasty. Yeah, we saw it on, on was it Tasty or Buzz? It was, uh, 
Something, something, something. So thank, thank you very much. You're so welcome, everybody. It's been lovely to see you. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Lauren Dot. Classes are free, and I love, I know so many of you are doing amazing. Thank you. 19 and all of the gang over at Repertorio Felix. One last yeah. amazing girl who an amazing book called Staying In. Go get online, buy it, all of the proceeds. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.